Well, I've been told a lot about Southern Texas, especially getting ready for this hunt. And the biggest thing that I've been told is that I need to get ready for hiking, for everything, because there's ridged rocks, there's very steep cliffs, and there's a lot of big valleys. I'm out of breath right now from hiking all day. I've been getting ready. Case and I are actually heading down to Southern Texas with Mr. Randy Lewis for our entry into the sheep hunting, into AWDAD, into all of this new realm of hunting that we've never even experienced before, and it's gonna be amazing. So I hope you guys stick around. I'm RJ Sanzarulo, and this is The Choice. Our boys are going on their first sheep hunt. Batteries, Already? you have clothes, you have pajamas. Yes. Driving me crazy. This week, RJ and Case will be spot and stalking Audeds, the desert bighorn sheep in the Lone Star State of Texas. While this type of hunting is physically demanding and won't be easy, the two can't wait to get out into the field. We're, we're getting ready here to take off shortly and uh, meet Case in Houston. Eventually, the crew meets Keith Stevens, an assistant guide at RLE Outfitters, who will finish the last two legs of the journey with them. Once they touch down in Texas, Keith drives the crew to RLE Outfitters, where they meet up with guide and owner Randy Lewis. What's up, buddy? How are you? How are you? Doing all right? Yes, sir. Good, man. good to see you. I'm good. Hello, buddy. How are you? Good. Everything good? Oh, good. After a long day of travel, the crew turns in for the night and hits the road early the next day, eager to get out into the field. I was the first morning here in Texas going after all that. I'm up first to back just out here at the gas station. We'll top off our tanks and we're going to head out there. We've got about a 30 minute ride left, so we're going to get there right about sun up and start the day. Both Case and I are unbelievably excited. We meet up with Mr. Randy, Mr. Keith. We're getting all ready and the first day comes around. The first morning we start off, we're driving, we're driving, we're riding around. We get a good idea of how everything out here in Texas looks and kind of experience how everybody's been saying these hills, rather than going up, they go into the ground and these valleys are just, it's crazy how they look because it looks flat. But as soon as you get to one of these little ledges, it just shoots down and then it comes back up. It's unbelievable. Looks like some ewes. Could be a little set of bachelor rams, I don't know, but that one ram right there is sure pretty good. Yeah, that's a big ram right there. Look at him through the scope. He's behind the Ocotillo. As soon as you guys are done looking at him, we'll pack that up and go. All right, so we stopped back uh, probably about four or 500 yards. We saw some, we thought we saw about 10 or 12. Pulled up here where we can see them better. Decided to stop and take another look at them. They're about 1,200 yards away now. And uh, Mr. Randy sees about two or three shooters in there that are really, really good. So now we just gotta go and see what we're gonna do. But there's there's just ram and all that all over that, that hill behind me. So, uh, it's gonna be a good hunt. It's gonna be a fun hike, especially when you're out of shape. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Having just spotted a group of Audads on a far off hillside, the crew is now hot on their trail, hoping to catch up and find a shooter. All right. right up against that rock face, there's some ewes right there. No. Is that a ram right there? What's that? On Where? the hill? Where? Over there? Ramp, go, ramp, go, ramp, go, ramp, go, ramp, go. He's coming out, he's coming out. Uh, See him, you see him, you see him. Where's he at? Right, right. Just a little bit left, a little bit left. Right, you got him, got him. Got him, got him. How far? 3, 308. 308 is where he stopped. Hold on, hold on. His butt, his butt to us. Good. Got him. Good. Ready, good. Kill me. Yeah! yeah. Yes, sir! Oh, man! What a shot! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Oh, man. He's down. He's down. Good. 
down. He's down. Dead down. Oh, my. Ooh. Yeah, they're bigger than you think. Son. Son. You, know, you ended up spotting them on this uh, this big hill, and uh, you saw them from about 1,500 yards out. It got pretty chaotic after that. You know, we were able to get out and uh, and get on them, and uh, you know, you threw your pack down and put that Browning on there. And it's a 300 win. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. 300 win mag. 300 win mag. We got the the binos on him. Got a got a range. It was uh, like 290 to start. Right, right before I squeezed the trigger, you said, "Hold on," and he turned more and turned was a little bit quarter into us, and I, I'm like, hey, you want me to hit him right in the point of the shoulder? And he said, yeah, take him. So uh, we took the shot and we dropped him. I mean, he went straight down that 100, and what's say 180 grain? 180 bullet? grain. That 180 grain bullet out of that Browning 300 wind mag, it, at 300 yards, there wasn't nothing for him to do except go straight down. Right, and this thing, I'm yeah. gonna guess he probably weighs 350, mm. something like that, and he's solid muscle. And uh, if you just take him, we'll just turn him like this here, right here. Look at this, and just look at the front of that, pull him back, show them people. I mean to tell you, that's a big old stud of a ram right there. And a great job, great job. So great shot, man, I'm proud thank of you. you. Thank you, thank you. Fantastic job. Now that Case has himself an exceptional audit down, RJ is up to bat. So the team regroups and creates a game plan. We drove and drove, and then we found them, and then we found the, the rams down low, and it's getting cooler now, and so I think that uh, as it gets a little cooler, it was super hot down, and it's probably in the mid-80s. This, this isn't cooler yet. This is still, <laughs> still, still dying hot. Feel this breeze? Yeah. This yeah. is cool, RJ. <laughs> this is a dry heat, so. Yeah. I'm not used to that. I'm not used to that at all. But we're going to go back and hunt these cliffs, and, and then if need be, we'll come back out and hit it again tomorrow, but we still got quite a bit to hunt, so let's get to it. So all right. In. With a mature Audet ram weighing well over 300 pounds and the pure size of the animal alone, bullet choice is critical. The boys can count on their Browning x bolts paired with a 180 grain 300 Win Mag bullet to get the job done. After having no luck in the afternoon, the crew decides it's time to move to a new location. Well, we come down and we're just cruising we're going around and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's Audad maybe 100 yards from us going up this not very tall valley cliff side. And once again, everything just goes crazy. We all hop out, we run. This is the very back one. Hold on, there's a bigger one up in the front. Okay, that real dark one. The real dark one. Right? He's going. Oh, I see him. He's right there in the middle. He's really big. See, he's going up. You ready? Yeah, go. Oh, wait, wait. Right there. Hang on, let him turn. Hold on. 126 yards. Right there. Man! Man! Ready? Yeah. yeah. He's walking behind me. Unfortunately, when our cameraman tripped, he double clutched and we missed the shot on camera. But thankfully, Case was behind us. He was still filming us shoot. And from there, we have us going back up and recovering my Audat. It felt like I had a really good shot. I felt like I was right where I needed to be, especially with my Browning X Bolt. I felt like it just, it punched him right in the shoulder. And now I'm, my heart beats racing unbelievably fast. And I'm ready to go see if I can recover my Audat. RJ made the shot right here and I saw him hump up, but he went on over the top. And so he's basically right straight in front of me, but we've got to go up this rock face and it's going to be, going to be a pretty strong, pretty strong climb. I uh, might not have been in the best shape that I could have been. I was running out of breath pretty quick there, but it was a great time and it was incredible to be able to experience what these rams and ewes climb up on like just a daily basis with ease. It's unbelievable. Oh. 
Oh, God. What's going on, RJ? <sighs> Not even probably 20 yards. I can see my own dead. I can see the horn sticking up over the brush. You smoke, damn. Yeah. Right in the shoulder, right? <laughs> Woo! That's when he was coming up that hill. You said dark, and this is yeah. the first one I saw. I was like, oh. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what happens at RLE Outfitters. <laughs> Thank you very much, Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, young man. Look at the fight Woo! he's been doing. Look at this. That's what you look for. I mean, we got two of them that are mm, freaking oh, specimens, baby. Case. Do it one nice day, man. shot, buddy. Great Doing one day. Hey, this is the first time we've ever tagged out on the first day. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> together. That is so awesome. You got a big grin on your face. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. Tell you. Yeah, we don't have any all day. <laughs> well, you got one now, and you got a smoker. <laughs> Joel woke up with the moon. <laughs> All right, so everybody knows Joel, right? Has everybody met Joel except Brandon, Brandon maybe? So Brandon, uh, this is Joel Tavera. Hey, so there, everybody's here, we're gonna try to get this done. And uh, we've got today and tomorrow to get it done, but I'm hoping that uh, we'll get on some sheep today and, and life will be good. Um, basically, we'll just let you guys stage down here while we go get them set up, and we'll come back and we'll start looking. I met most everybody here through Wounded Warrior Outdoors, and uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to uh, help with that organization. Through the organization, I've been able to meet some of these warriors, and when, when I met Joel, we were at a, at a fundraiser, and I was so impressed, not just by Joel, but by all the warriors. In the course of things, I thought it was important that Joel be able to fulfill a dream, which was get into sheep hunting, and so we offered him the opportunity to come and be a be a part of, a, of an odd ad hunt. I uh, grew up in North Carolina. I uh, joined the Army because I didn't want to be stuck there in North Carolina. And I took me across the world, took me a few different places, kept me most in the South. I was pretty happy about that. Then the Middle East. So that was a story in itself. I was deployed in October of 07. And in country, it wasn't the May, the March of the following year. Five months and some days later, I was injured. Uh, incoming rounds, one came and hit, one hit my truck as we were rolling out the gate, to head out of the base to go, to go on a mission. It was a 122 rocket. Uh, obviously, it was uh, produced by Iran, and that's just kind of what left me the way I am today. It was a blessing, you know, offering to guide me on this hunt. It's just all, everything, I guess, uh, the stars aligned, so. Uh, I was so impressed with Joel um, that it, it was um, I don't know, just something that was uh, a feeling that overtook me that, you know, you, you don't talk to a guy a lot, but when you see a guy and you're just that impressed with him, you gotta make sure that you're able to spend a little time around him. And we're just lucky to have Joel here with us. So thanks, Joel, for coming out. The fair was actually spotting one. They were so spooky, and they sp they spooked out very easily. And we'd get up and do that nice little, like few hundred yard walk across, you know, quite a few uh, uneven uh, locations, and then get to a point and get situated. And then they'd move, like hop the hill or hop the mountain, go to the other side. So. Accommodations on hunts like this require a depth knowledge in both strategy and technology with the end goal of giving the best possible experience to our veterans. After chasing the Audad for several months, the crew encounters a herd settling in on a nearby hillside and prepare to set up Joel for a shot. Get your finger up by the trigger. I got it on the right. Right, right, Joel, right and up. I'm actually looking through the crosshairs while he's able to uh, shoulder the gun and get it up against him. 
um, as I'm looking through the crosshairs, um, I'm able to make sure that it's on the animal and then call whenever it's time to shoot. He hit him. Mm. He hit him. Oh, he hit him. Another kill and he's coming down here. He's hitting back. Yeah, so right after he shot, you know, the adrenaline's rushing for me, which is great whenever I'm helping him stabilize the gun and starting to shake. But uh, we got another bullet in, watch the animal, and uh, we're getting ready to uh, have him take a, another shot at it, and the animal uh, had expired. He's hit, he's hit good. If I can get on him. Good job, Joel. Good job, Joel. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. no, you have a drilling going on. Oh, it's man. amazing. Hey, thank you, gentlemen. Job, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Job, thank you. Thank you. Man. Thank you for bringing Joel and Steve safely to us. Thank you for a guided shot from your hand to that all that. But you've presented something to somebody who deserves it so much. And because of men like that, all of us are able to enjoy our freedom our kids, our family, our life. I know his life has been made tougher. We know that by your grace and by your glory, you've made him the man that he is and he makes us the man that we are. We come before you today humbly and we simply say thank you for all your creation and all your help. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Look at that. He's gorgeous. He's got a nice mane, nice shafts. Can you see this? Right there, baby. 575 yards. That was more fun. Long shot. That is absolutely incredible. Yes. It's not only incredible, it's one of the best things that I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it has does. everything to do with you. I don't know what all you've gone through, and I don't have any idea how you could persevere. You have more strength and toughness in your little finger than I've got in my whole body. And to me, you're nothing but 100% man and hero. And I appreciate it, and I thank you for letting us be a part of it. That was an unbelievable week. I can't thank everybody enough, especially Mr. Randy, for letting us come down. Congratulations, Case, Mr. Joel. It was just jaw-dropping to be able to experience everything that went on. The first day we get our ram, second day we go cruise around, and the next day we even get to watch Joel, a wounded warrior, be able to shoot his, shoot his ram at however far it was. It was incredible. And it was, it was it's something that I'll never forget because being there, seeing Joel especially, be able to get his, it it's so humbling, it's unbelievable. Right now I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because they've, they've put so much for us that we can't ever repay them. And just being able to do these little things to help out, especially with Winter Warrior Outdoors, it's, it's incredible to be able to see how much it helps them. But again, I can't thank Mr. Randy Lewis, Mr. Keith, everybody there, Mr. Steve for helping out. It was an unbelievable time, whether we were hunting, just cruising around, going down to the border, just seeing everything. It was amazing. So thank you guys very much. Thank you guys for making your choice the choice. We'll see you guys next week.